we really do need one another. Um, it's got to be, like I said, it's got to be more than a song. Our, our relationship with God has to be his manifested presence. And, and, and last night when we were here, uh, the presence of God was extreme. Um, wow, that was really, it was really extreme. It was just extreme. That's a, it was just all, all about leadership. It was all about God placing people in their calls. It was, it was just extreme. And, uh, you know, without that, without that, and everyone got a word of the Lord. It truly was from God. It wasn't just me. It came from this person, and, that, and then it came from that person. But the Spirit of God just sizzled, sizzled in the place. And uh, t Teddy was out, and he was walking. <laughs> he was walking. And there were just a lot of cool things that were going on, but, but, but the presence of God was here. And without the presence of God, you know, uh, I, uh, I was talking, and I don't want you to know when I was talking to Suzanne, it was yesterday, but I don't know if it was after church, but I, I think it was. And I, I said, these churches that don't have the presence of God, you know, all they can do is sing about the presence. All they can do is sing about Jesus on the throne. But they never get healed. They never get delivered. And they walk around with their demons in them their whole life. And it's like, wow, what, what a sad situation. What a sad. And the generational curse is just go right down through them onto their little kids. And everybody's in church. But everybody is, is so demonized. And they don't like that they can't walk with the Lord. And they get frustrated because they're not walking with God like they, like they know they should. And this and that. And you see a lot of the kids go astray. And they don't, don't follow the Lord. I'm telling you what. That's not victory. That's not victory. Victory is when you have the presence of God. You have the presence of God in your hands and you're making a difference. Listen, prophecy is great, but without the presence in it, we don't know whether it's right or wrong. Amen? And without it coming to pass, we don't know whether it's right or wrong. But if it comes to pass, that means God is moving. Amen? But without that move, there's nothing there. It's all just words. It's all just a song. Amen? It's like singing to your, your future wife, and you don't know who she is. It's just like, man, come on. You know, and, and I know it goes deeper than that. I'm not taking anything away from that. But, but it has to come a time when it all becomes real. It all becomes a manifested presence of God. And what, what, does, that, what does that really look like? You know? What does that really look like? Signs. Signs. Otherwise, your words are just words. Well, we understand Jesus is Lord. But your, your very presence has to bring something in other than just... Amen. Like I said, if you prophesy by the Spirit of God, nobody knows anything until it happens, right? Until it's manifested. So unless, this, unless the presence of God is manifested, can we really say we rule? If it's all just going to be and it isn't, it's got to be. Amen? Amen? It just can't always be future tense. Oh, well, I'm going to. I'm going to. You're going to. You're gonna. What are you gonna do? <laughs> well, I'm gonna get married. <laughs> well, quit talking about it. <laughs> get the ring. <laughs> and let's sing, Here Comes the Bride. <laughs> Amen. That's what we're after. So I want to go. I want to go in this a little bit. I want to go to Ephesians four, um, and I'll start with verse one. And all this is going to bring in the presence of God, the presence of God. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. 
Paul said, I'm a prisoner. I have nothing else that leads me. I'm a prisoner. You think we would have found Paul taking a nip? <laughs> Only Timothy. <laughs> Only for stomach reasons. <laughs> you think we would have found Paul doing something? Like, really, Paul? No, he was a prisoner in the Lord. He was a bondservant to God. He was welded to God. What followed this man? Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Well, Paul's dead. And Moses is dead. And you're the Moses. You're the Paul. You're the Peters. Amen? Amen. They're all gone. We only live for a, a, a short time. And you can't be running always off to Dallas, Texas, down to Memphis. It's got to be here. Otherwise, the people in this town don't make it. They don't make it. They'll get, they'll get discouraged. I, therefore, a prisoner, I beseech you. I cry to you, walk worthy of your vocation, wherein you are called. And last night, we found out our vocations. Amen? Amen? Now, a lot of them we knew. We knew the vocation. But last night, God says, you're not there yet, but this is where I'm taking you. Amen. Do you know, when, when I became a Christian back in 1980, and even before then, I didn't even know I was. But I got born again. But in 1980, I started going to church. From there till eight years from there, I, I had no clue of what my call was. And that's such a shame. That's such a shame that people in the church don't know what their vocation is. But that's the only thing that is going to make saints. Amen? Amen? That you walk in your vocation. With all lowliness, humility, meekness, with all long-suffering. Long-suffering, just putting up with people. Just putting up with people. Amen? Just putting... What'd you say? <laughs> yeah, putting up with the cats. Anyway, forbearing one another in love. Total love. Otherwise... You're not going to go anywhere with God. You're not going to go anywhere. You love one another. You love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love opens up doors for you to be next to God so his manifested presence will work through you. Amen? Otherwise... You're, God, you're not going to experience God, and people aren't going to experience God through you. Nothing that really matters. You hearing me? Nothing that really matters. You say, I'll pray for you that you, the, the banker will give you another loan. You know, it's just like, <laughs> and thank God we got the loan, you know, and did those prayers work? Yes. But the, the things that are really needed, it's held back. Because person really isn't walking in their vocation because that's where you that's where you bloom that's where you blossom right there that's where what's a blossom a blossom uh, you know blossoms on an apple tree produce what fruit you know and that's where you really blossom at amen and and, and you ever smell blossom how sweet that is how sweet it is how sweet it is for the saints of god to blossom in the things that they're called, the vocation they're called, and you're not all called in the same vocation. We saw that last night. And God's not going to use just one person. And as we saw last night, the Spirit of God would, would move on this one, and then it would move on that. The, the Word of the Lord says, I really think God, this is what God wants. Well, the proof is in the pudding. And man, I'll tell you what, not only was it, was it, performed when it was said but it was performed what to do and we performed it and the spirit of god just really moved really moved and in fact uh travis said i think you i think you i think you need to anoint each one of us 
It never even came to my mind. I'm there praying. Who am I praying? I'm anointing Chrissy's wrist, right? Isn't that what I was doing? And we were praying for her. And, but the Spirit of God was moving anyway. Teddy had already walked by that time. And anyway, why, the Spirit of God was really, really moving. And, and God was, was saying, and then when I started anointing, it's just like, okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. And I started anointing. Man, prophecy started coming forth. And just not from me, but from this one and that. And Brian was prophesying. It was just coming. And, and Cass found out his call, what he's called to, and, and this and that, and what God wants to do through him. And just... And it, it, was just, it was just so good. So here I am. Here I am. I'm the one that is called to anoint, but I'm not getting the word. The word came from Travis. That word came from him. Who's Travis? He's just the guy that wandered into town. <laughs> Amen. And he started, Pontiac needs to meet. Amen. He said, I just feel like maybe you need to, you need to, you need to anoint us. And, and so right then comes to my mind, we need anoint for the call. But it, but it was more than that. It was more than just, I'm called you to do it's, It was all the, all the, it was all the, 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 the this is where I want to go, but, but watch out for this and watch out for that because this is going to confront you. And it was just so much. And then every person was different. So we went through the guides. How many guys was there? Eight? Was there eight guys just last, last night? Counting me. Was there something like that? And uh, that's a new beginning for this church. <laughs> eight men in one place. Uh, not only eight men in one place, but eight men that have a call of God in their life. Amen. Totally amazing. And then, and then God went to Gail, and I'm thinking, okay, we'll go right to the saint here after we, after we anointed the men because God called the 12 apostles, and he didn't call any women there right there right at first. But anyway, we got, all right, we got some men. We got some young bucks. that got some spunk and kick in them, amen? And then hallelujah, God. And before Moses, <laughs> Moses and uh, whatever go up to the mountain to pass on, we got some guys here. But God, God set them in place. So we go to Gail, and God says uh, to her, He's telling the boys back here, he says, she is your mother. She has served you. She has washed your feet all these years. And really, we've come. And who's playing the music back there tonight? We're there. You know, she's, she's praying. She's, she's playing the music. And, um, and this is what God said. She says, hey, would you, would you heal my... And the Lord says, she's getting old in years. And he says, you, you boys are going to have to pray for your mother. Amen. You're going to have to pray for your mother. He says, I'm going to do mighty works through her. Through her. But he, she, he said, her body's getting old, and she needs prayer for that stuff. And he says, you need to pray. She's washed your feet. Now you help her Amen. and remember to pray for her. And so there was such direction given, such direction. And each person, and then Cass's daughter had a headache. And she was back there, and she was a migraine. God took it away. Amen? Is that true? Amen. Yeah. God took it away. I beseech you. To walk worthy of your vocation. And what's worthy of it? Worthy is getting everything out. You become a bond servant to God. You say, but I'm having a hard time. That's just you. A, a person told me today, he says, he was talking about a guy. He was, he has a, a, he has two jobs. And his one job is plowing snow. And he has to plow snow. And he's just saying, I'm going to give this job up. Because I'm so frustrated, and he says, it's all right up here. Mm -hmm. That's where your frustration's at, mm -hmm. right up here. That's where it's at. And he says, if you don't conquer that, it'll just be the next thing that'll frustrate you. Yeah. I thought, that's really good. And this, this, this man, uh, I know he don't, he don't go to church, but does believe in God. But what wisdom? Yeah. What wisdom? Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. 
Man. If you can't, if Satan can't break up the nucleus, actually the nucleus of this church, if they can't get in, looking around, they can't get in to break it up. It's like, it's going to move. There is one body, one spirit, even, even you are called in one hope of your calling. One hope of your calling. You got one hope. You got one hope. That's your calling. One hope. That's your calling. Amen. That's it. You can't be something you're not. Amen. Amen. Teddy, can you can you be a woman? <laughs> you're never going to get a date if you even dress up like one because they're going <laughs> to they're going to say your hormones are off. You got a beard. <laughs> But unto every one of us is given the grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Every one of us is given grace. When you say, I don't think I can fulfill it, yes, you can. Amen. But you got to know what it is, amen? amen. You can't, if, if you're a tulip, you're not a daisy, amen? You're still a flower, but you're, you're, you're not a daisy. Wherefore, he says, when he ascended up on high and he took everybody out of Abraham's bosom, he sent us gifts down here. I'm going to go down to verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets. I'm going to tell you what. If God gives, whatever God gives you as a leader, you got you to be that. Amen. You got to follow that, or you're not going anywhere. You know, you know, you know how people, and you, everybody knows this. When they're trying to find their place, they go from church to church to church to church, mm -hmm. and somehow when they leave a church and they go to another church, they're always doing the will of God. Right? The Lord is leading me. That you know, you hear that all the time, and maybe He is. Maybe He is leading you. It's kind of like go, it's kind of like dating. If you if you just keep dating all the time and you never get married up, well, when I was little, well, you can't have kids unless you get married, right? You can't have a family unless you get married, right? You just got to go into perfection. You got to get married. You got to get married to that call, that place that you're called to. You got to get married to it. And surely, if God brought you in a year ago or two years ago, how is it that he could lead you somewhere else and it not be higher? You know? Surely, if Paul's in town... Why would you go? Why would you go to Titus if Paul's in town, <laughs> right? He gave us apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers for the perfecting of the saints. You can't get perfected unless you fall under that, whatever that is. Pastors, teachers, you can't get perfected unless you fall under that, that whole thing. And I think in churches you'll find, you'll find sometimes you'll find apostle, prophets, pastors, teachers, amen, if the, th the whole thing is big enough. But unless you fall under that and submit to that, you're never going to be perfected into your call. My dad says you never can be a leader until you learn how. And, until you learn how to follow. And that was really true. You got you to gotta come under submission to that, whatever that is. And then you got to come under submission to your call. Because if you can't come under submission to the ones that are over you, you know, some people say, I'll follow you as long as I want to follow you. Tell that to your mom. 
<laughs> Come here. <laughs> but we don't look at it like that. A lot of people, the body of Christ doesn't, but I'm telling you, if you're going to fulfill your call, all you got to do is just fall under the ranks. Fall under the ranks. Amen? You just fall under it. And we, we found out last night, nobody's a big cheese, but everybody has a call. Amen? But we, we, we know that there's, 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 those, there's those that are here, 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 here. Does, what, does one up here is, what does that look like? Well, he was a sinner too, but he was called to do this. And, and he's, a, he's a sinner too, and he was called to do that. And so we're, we're all just sinners delivered saved by the grace of God, set in office to do a job and to fall underneath that, whatever that looks like. Amen? Amen. We come out of homes where the children wouldn't submit to mom and dad. The mother's fighting with dad. He's just there pulling his hair out thinking, what am I going to do? I'm not in control at all. He don't even understand what leadership is supposed to look like. We come into church, we don't understand what leadership looks like. And I'm going to tell you what, because you do, you're going to have to teach them. You're going to have to teach them out there what leadership looks like. You're the leader, and you're going to have to make leaders out of them. And you're going to have to teach them. But unless you fall under that, Remember Sarah called Abraham Lord, my Lord. Now, Susie did that the other night, my Lord. But unless she does that and really does it, she ain't going anywhere. She's a wannabe. She'll always be a wannabe. Wish I would have done something with the kids, church. Wish I would have done this. You're never going to do anything unless you can fall under that leadership. And just because she, she's married to me and we have a little thing going on out there, she's, she's under that. She has a voice, but she don't have the last word. Amen? And that falls on me. And if I make a decision and I go broke, I got a problem. I make a decision and I mess it up. It all falls on me. Amen? And it really, folks... It's not a we thing. To only to a certain point. Take the counsel. A king takes the counsel of all his advisors, and then he makes a decision. Amen? This is how, it, this is how the church is run. It lays up here, and you got to get it from God. There's coming a day, says the Lord, for each one of you that are called to be leaders you're going to have to get it from me, says the Lord. And you can't miss it. You got to get it from God. And you got to stand on it. And they'll, there'll be opposition against you to get you off course. But you got to stand strong or you can't be a leader for me. And that's why all our homes have fallen. They've all fallen because... Men didn't know how to lead. They married women that were leading because the, the women, they saw mom. She was running the show, and she ran the show, and her, her mom ran the show, and her mother's mother met, ran the show, and they all had it turned upside down. And they looked for a, a nice, weak man they could run without him even knowing it. But God, by the anointing and the strength of God, is giving you, each one of you, a vocation that you've got to follow. Unless you know how to, if a man can't rule his house well, how can he rule the church? Isn't that what the Bible says? If, if a woman can't follow the husband without doubt, demanding out of him and <clears throat> pouting, how can you go to church and submit under authority? How can you do that? How could you ever run something, a facet of the church, when you don't, you don't have it right? Amen. Amen? But if you have it right, that same pureness of God will flow from you, and everybody you're over will just get in line, like Solomon's place. It'll just get in line. Why? Because you've already conquered you. 
but the anointing of God because you did rests on you. Amen? And you can be exactly what you're called to be, and God is the one that makes the difference in your life. If you got that thing right, amen? And then you're committed to it. You're committed. No matter what, you do your job. You make sure it's being done. Amen? For the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Whose ministry? Their ministry. Their ministry. Amen? Everybody grows up. Grandpa dies. Dad dies. Amen? And if the son never gets married, it all dies. It dies with him. Amen? The name is never carried on. The, the work is never carried on. Amen? So, for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ, think about this. You're anointed, you go out, and you anoint, and you make, and they make, and they're perfecting the body of Christ because you did your job. Amen? You did your job. You were committed. And you waited on the Lord, but you waited with him. You waited, and you were before him all the time. For the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come together in unity of the faith, till you just got it going, and this thing is huge. God looks at it, and he says, I know you haven't seen one another, talked to one another in months, maybe even some years, but you're all creating out there. It's all you're creating. You're all expanding. Amen. The pureness of God. Because you understand. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. It's got to be one faith. Not, it's not like we got going on now. This whole thing is messed up, folks. Church is claiming I got Jesus. He ain't got no power. They're over here. They're singing the same songs. We got Jesus. They're wrong. We're right. And you ain't got no power. Nobody's doing anything. They're kicking the pastor out of town. Amen. And then over at this other church, we got it all. We're the right ones. And I remember when I, when I came out of one mainline church, I'd stop and I'd say to the pastor, Pastor, you think, you think this, of the certain religion I came out of, do you think any of them will get to heaven? And you know what he said? He says, Oh, I don't know. <laughs> they thought they had it all, but they had no power. They had no power. And then my back gets healed. This is, this is a disgrace. In a cab of a semi. Not in the church. In a cab of a semi. Isn't that amazing? I was having more church in the cab of a semi than I was having when I went to church on Sunday morning. Is that not a shame? That surely is an abomination. Amen? I had more going on in the cab of the truck between 12th and 13th gear <laughs> and the smoke just coming out of my stack than they got going on in church. Isn't that amazing? And I was healed. So I went back to the church and I told him, I got healed. We don't know that was God or not because he don't heal us here. That's exactly what the elder said. And I had gone to the elders. They anointed me with oil and I just walked out of there with a bent neck. Bad back for 10 years, but I got healed. I had church in the cab of my truck one day, but it was real. So, so all I'm saying is your, your walk's you walk, your call, your vocation, it's all got to be just real. Amen. It's got to be real. You know, you can come here and you can feel the presence of God and say, wow, that was really good and we had church tonight. But you got to fulfill your call, whatever that looks like. Amen? you gotta, you got to dive into it. It isn't about you coming to church and getting healed and say, whoo, I got healed. With, it, it, it's more than that. It's what your call is. Amen? So last night, that's what was going on. Till we all come in, in the unity of the faith, we all see it the way we need to see it. Amen? 
unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Boy, that's a tall order. Fullness of Christ. What's your call? Well, whatever it is, it's the fullness of it. I have the fullness of it going on. One teaches, but then he performs after he comes down. The word is confirmed. We henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. See, that's where the devil comes in, and your, and your anointing just falls. It's kind of like Peter on, on the wave. Uh, he, he finds his call. I've been called to do signs and wonders, and then he gets second thoughts. What am I doing out here, out of this boat? This is so crazy. And he starts sinking. He started losing his call. He started losing his vocation right there. He started sinking on down. He was getting tossed to and fro in his head. Amen? And if we have a tendency to get frustrated and, and losing it, it's one thing to say, oh, that kind of bothers me, but phew, I'll stay the course. Be no more children. That means we're grown up. Men's got beards. Women's got their hair colored. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. I am amazed. I am amazed at different times of well, uh, let's put it this way. If you keep pushing in on your call, you won't be deceived. But I am amazed at the level of deception that is carried on in the body of Christ. <sighs> I'm amazed. Amen. And it's getting worse. It's getting worse. getting worse it's getting so bad overtaken people are just think of the deception that that has gone on the business travis used to be in selling cars amen he's a salesman good salesman he never done anybody wrong sold him but how many car salesmen how many insurance people sold you life insurance that they knew you couldn't afford but they're going to get you on the wagon anyway so deceived by men and women that she looks one way, but she's a different way when you get her home. Amen? Amen. Leah! What's this? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> or men. They use this, this, these words to smooth. And once they get, what they, once they get married and that, it's like, the whole different other comes out. How, how is it that we're so deceived? Churches, you went through and said, this is a church, this is a good church, this is a good church, and found out the pastor was out stealing money or running around. It's like, whoa, how could this be? Did this just get in his heart? No, it's been in his heart. It's been in her heart. It's been in their heart. How could we be so deceived? Because we don't we're not led by the Spirit of God. Because if we are led by the Spirit of God, he'd reveal the truth about things. But you can't do it alone. That's what I've learned. You've got to surround yourself with people that truly hear the Spirit of God. One will say this, the other one will say that. But the Spirit of God will testify to the truth. Is this not true? Yes. But my big thing is, whatever the truth is for you, you got to live it. you got to fulfill it. It's got to grow, and it's got to go. What does a flower produce? Lots of little seeds on the inside. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> if you're seedless, then you're not worth much. What good's a steer? Just to eat them. <laughs> right? Good old T bone. Just to eat them. <laughs> Amen. They're not really good for anything. Just to eat them because they, they're not going to produce anything. Right? 
So you don't you don't want to do that. You want to have you want to have seed. And when that flower dies, when you die, you have a garden full of you. Amen. You have a garden full of you. What is your call? You found out last night. Many of you did. What is your duty? Many of you that weren't here last night, you know what your duty is. Do it and become excellent in it. Amen. Excellent. You know, it might be that I'm up here singing, but really I'm not a singer. <laughs> Amen. That's really the truth of the matter. I'd really do good in the shower and behind the barn. <laughs> but I am not a singer. But what I do is this, and I have to do it well. I was very disturbed tonight. I'm there eating at Baby Bulls, and I'm saying to Susie, I don't have a sermon. I don't have a sermon. This is really not good. I'm bothered by it. Are you bothered by your, your fulfilling your call? You should be. Amen? You should be. Not bothered to the point where you're... You're bothered, am I doing a good job? Am I going to perform well here? You're before the Lord with all lowliness, amen, meekness. I never look at myself. I look at myself, let's put it this way, as I have a job to do. Like a, like a father over you, I have a job to lead you and lead you as sons and daughters, but to one place, you got to have seed. You got to get to that place where you're producing. You got to get that. Or I failed. Amen? Amen. That's true. We henceforth, we're in, we refuse to be children. Children don't have kids. God will never use you if you're still a child. And I, and I told you what it was. We got to have more than words. Got to have more than a good a good story, we got to have proof. Proof. See, Daddy, you talked about the day you, you used to heal people and you used to do this and that. Well, I got a headache. I, I don't feel good, Dad. I remember walking with, with Emily in the room. She had a fever. She was a little girl. She was like, you're a little one. And I just walked with her. 15 minutes, half hour goes by and just kept walking and praying. I, just, I declare healing. I pray healing on my little daughter. And all once her fever just broke in my arms. You know? What good is my religion if that I can't perform it? Not good for anything. Really? It really isn't. It isn't. I mean, if I, and I don't have something going on. Are we not in a supernatural religion? We're supposed to be, because that's all it ever talks about. It never, it never talks about Peter going to Walmart and getting a loaf of bread and paying for it. You know, <laughs> Somehow the money came supernatural, out, out of a fish's mouth. Really? <laughs> Amen? Do we, do we think about, wow, he paid his taxes? You're really focusing on the tax? How about the fish? They had the coin. <laughs> Amen? And Jesus says, you're following me because you can eat bread. You ever question, how'd you do that? You know, that, Jesus said, that's what it ought to be. That's what you, you need to go for. We no more be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. Get anchored down. Get anchored down. Amen? Amen? Get, get it down. I, if I haven't proven myself in 30-some years, quit looking out the side of your eyes at me. <laughs> like, really? Dad, are you really my dad? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'll teach you. <laughs> yes, when you have, you got to accept it after a while. And not only that, they got to accept you after a while. Amen? Because if you learn that, you'll be that. And your seed will be that. It's dad. 
That's mom. That's apostle. That's prophet so-and-so. And if he is a prophet, what he prophesies will come to pass. Amen? And you learn you're in the school of the prophets. Amen? But this church is, is starting to, it's like, a, it's like a, a tulip coming up in the winter, in the spring. It's like, wow, oh, we got some snow in it. It's like, it ain't going to kill that tulip. They can weather it. It's going to come on up and it's going to produce. And it's going to be so beautiful. You ever look down in the, in the center of a tulip? Man, who can make such beauty as that if it's not God? And, and as people look down on the inside of you, they said, man, this woman, this man is good. That's what you want to be. You want to be that. You want to be that. But speak the truth in love. I, yeah, and yeah, I've gone, I've gone home and, and I've thought, oh, I shouldn't have said it like that. I should have said it different. I say, and it's never I should have said it more harshly. It's always I should have said it with more love, with more compassion, but I had to say it. But I should have said it different. And I'm learning that. How many of you raised children and said, I should have been more harsh with them? Really? <laughs> Never, huh? I should have been more loving. I should have, should have told them I loved them. Amen? I should have told them. I should have told the saints of God around me, I love you, rather than say, oh, it's going a little far. You can't go too far. Amen. You really can't. In love, speaking the truth in love. May grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, for whom the whole body is fitly jointed together. And you got to just know your place. You got to know your place. Even in this little church, you got to know where, you, where, you, where you're, you're plugged in right at the time. Amen. I'm plugged in here and that's where I'm plugged in. How you doing? The best I can. Not slacking? No, no, 100%. I'm all in. I'm all in. I sing with all my heart on Sunday. I sing with all that is within me to make it the best I can. I am not a singer, but I'm doing it the best I can. Right? Cassie and I are up here. We're not, we're not going to cut no CDs, right? These other guys might, but we're not. But we know that we're helping where we can help with every ounce of strength in us. Amen? Amen? That's how you need to be. Praise God. And if God sees you doing that, when you get in your call, call, you're going to be just that excellent. When you, raise, when you raise your kids and you're raising your kids, don't you teach them to be excellent? When they walk out of the house and their pants is hanging half down, don't you just, just grab them by the neck or do you just let them go? Mm, say, hey, come here. We don't imitate the world. The world imitates itself, and it is the world. But we imitate Christ and Christ alone. Amen? Amen. Christ alone. We speak the truth in love. And we get in our right joint, amen? Right place in the body of Christ, and we perform. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. That's all it is. You ever, when you were a little kid, you were going to be a baseball star. I thought I was. Yeah, I'm going to be a pitcher. And you know what my dad would say? Yeah. You never know. You might be. Keep pushing in. So now I was in Little League and I was playing third base and missing the ball. <laughs> or I would get a good one and throw it over to first base. Just like, yes, I'm going to be in the major leagues. And that's okay. Be the best you can be. But that wasn't where I was called. 
It was after a while I realized I'm not called there. I'm not called there. Just, I'm called where I'm called. For the moment, I'm called there. And then God changes things around. And now he, he plugs you in here. Amen? And then you find your place and you move in that. And have your being. Having the understanding, and this is people that walk in the vanity of their mind. Now, the vanity is you're doing something you're not called to do. That's just the vanity of it. That's just the vanity of it. But what are you called to do? When you're called to do something, you're doing it, and you're not in vanity, and guess what? Your understanding isn't darkened. If you're, if you're trying to be something that you're not, God says, I cannot enlighten you to your fullness because you're cutting yourself off from me. You're cutting yourself off from me. When, you're not, when you, you know what your call is and you're not giving it your all, you're cutting yourself off from God. When you're given your all and you make time for it, then God starts to open, you, open himself up to you. If I, just, if I just did this halfway, I would, be, I would cut myself off from God. I, I would get where I didn't fear God because I would be alienated in my mind and heart towards God. I wouldn't fear him. So what would I start doing? Sinning. Amen? Right? I'd start doing things I'm not supposed to do because my understanding is cut off, is darkened. Amen? Only God can bring the light to our understanding if we plug ourselves into what we're called with all our heart, all our strength, all our mind, all our soul. We've got to be all in, and that's how God wants us. Does he want us to be lukewarm? No, and that isn't believing in Jesus. That's your call. That's all you got going for you, right? Sandy, when you were a young girl, what did you have going for you? You were a girl. That's it. And maybe you'll make the fullness of that, amen? Have a child. Get married. Have a child, amen? That's, when it comes to that, that's that, amen? Family. This is it. When you have a call, that's all you got. But you got to use it 100%. So I encourage you, if you know your call tonight, whatever your call is, you got to be 100% in. You got to make time for it. Amen. And when you don't know that you, you say, well, but I don't have that much time, that takes precedent. You don't have to quit. I've proved that out. You can work a job, and you can work this job too. God makes a way, man. He knows you got to eat. He knows you got to make money, but this is your end. Whatever this call is, this is your end. Amen? It's really, that's all you got. What are you, Dad? Well, I play, I play music. We've had some real good hits. But the presence of God is what we're looking for. That's why we have the good hits. Amen? Because when we worship God, we worship him with all our heart. And God says, I'll give, you one, I'll give you one to put out there on the internet. Because you're all in. See, this is the problem with people. They're not all in. They don't want to be all in. They say they're all in, but they're not all in. They need to get all in. And they're cutting themselves off from God. Their minds are darkened. It's not enlightened like it needs to be. Oh, you get a word from the Lord here and there. Yeah, it's the Lord did speak to you, but really, is that, is that all it is? Well, God said, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> well, good for you. Great. But what'd you do? I was all right. <laughs> Be 
being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. God shows us the truth, shows us the truth, and we go, yes, 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 Lord. Yeah, all right, I see it, I see it. And I feel the conviction. But the devil comes in, he pushes away and says, really? Really did God say? No new things under the sun with the devil. Really did God say you shouldn't eat from this tree? I mean, really? Look at, look at big juicers on there. Come on. So your, your call, your call, your call in your life, and I understand there's major prophets, but with you, you're major. Wherever you're called to, you're of the major. You're, you got it down. You understand how to do it. If you work on cars, we take it to you because you know. You know. You don't take it to the guy that's a wannabe. But I'm telling you, when you're called to be something for the Lord, you're, the, you're an expert. You got it. You got it. And we need to believe God because we're, we're, we're coming into the extreme move of God where God, when he comes in, it's no funny business no more. No funny business. He said, I want you all in. You might not be acting like a screwball. You're just not all in. He says, hey, hey, when are you going to get all in? We don't want to hear that, right? Zacharias, he had a hard time believing that too. And the power of God was there. And he was in the house of God serving the Lord, but he didn't believe God, did he? He didn't believe God, did he? Kiss the son, lest he turn and wet the sword. Kiss the son. Be intimate with the son of God, right? Amen. Why he's there, why your call is so fresh, so good. So fresh and so good. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. The fear of the Lord, we're not, ta we're not the, the fear of the Lord, all our fear is, is that, are we doing what we need to do? I was very concerned tonight, I didn't have what you needed. I didn't have what you needed inside of me. I, I was fearing God. Oh, I, maybe I spent too long shoveling snow out here with my brother, Cass. I spent too long doing that. And I was over there, and we were clearing that parking lot over there. Like, ah, oh, I should have been home. I should have been home. It was bothering me, see, that I wouldn't be the best I could be for you. But it was for God, really. But it was for you. I told Suzanne, I said, I got a people coming tonight, and I do not have a sermon. I do not have it on the inside of me. And I'm fearful I failed the Lord today. I didn't spend enough time in his presence. And I went home, and I got in front of the fireplace, and I'm worshiping God, and the Spirit of God is coming on me. And, I, and, 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 I, and I, so I, when the Spirit of God is so strong on me, uh, Lord, why are you here like this? Why are you here like this? And, and, I, and when I said, just pour out your miracles upon me. Pour out your miracles down. Give me that miracle working strength, oh God. And poof, the power of God just hit me. When I said miracles, I, could, I said some other stuff and it wasn't. But when I said miracles, poof, you know, and miracles is something we got to, I got to have for you. I got to have for the people, right? I got to spend that time. But I didn't make enough time for a, for a message for you. And, it was, and I didn't have it on the inside. And I was worried. And I, and I almost, I was fearing that I failed God. Well, you don't need to fear. I do need to fear. We all need to fear. Says the Lord. 
whether he come in and he find us undone. Zechariah evidently didn't fear God because he's looking at an angel and he's running his big mouth. I don't know it's true. How often you see an angel, even this one that stands at the throne of God himself, and he's come to deliver a message, and that's kind of where we're at. We're kind of at different times in our life, we're kind of like Zacharias's. We're standing there in the presence of God, it's strong on us. Yet when we leave, we forget who we are, right? The fear of God is a fountain of life. So, what am I thinking? I better give more time to God. I better get in the presence of God. So I'm there at the fireplace, and I'm getting down, and I just feel the power of God all over me, not telling me anything. And I'm thinking at, the, at that time, I'm thinking, I need to ask him, what should I preach on? But I haven't spent enough time with him yet. You know, it's, it's like, hi, Dad. Hey, can I have five bucks? Well, it's good to see you, son. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, I feel the power of God, and I can't go right out and ask him right away, what do I need to preach on tonight? You know, it's just like, all right, now i got to spend time. So there I am, and I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just in that, in that, and I'm just getting about ready, and the phone rings, and it's Susanna. <laughs> I'm just about home. <laughs> Oh, I, I said, I haven't got a sermon yet. I'm trying to get a sermon here. So I'm out at Bulls, and I'm, I'm complaining to her. I haven't got a sermon. And I'm feeling convicted in my heart. I haven't, I haven't spent enough time with God. I was shoveling snow when I should have been in the presence of God. How do you know, how, how many know that many times the devil just has you go off do something? Oh, it's legit. Change that baby diaper. It really is. It's just like, I got to get over here. When I say that, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of Travis. He's changing the diaper when he should have been here all alone. <laughs> right? It's true. He's got to get out of the house. He's got to do what he's called to do. So to fear God is a fountain of life that one may avoid the snare of death. The snare of death. What is death to you that you would never fulfill your call? Really, you're going to stand before the Lord? You're going to stand before him and say, well, what were you, God, you, you, know, you know when you get in the presence of the Lord, I know what I'm supposed to do. And God says, why didn't you submit to that pastor? Why didn't you submit to him? That's where I had you, wherever that was at. Why didn't you submit to him? I called you to be an elder or an elder or whatever. I called you to be a pillar in the church, and yet you, you, you couldn't do that. You, you didn't do it. You acted like you were doing it, but you weren't doing it. Right? How many, we, 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 we could name just multitudes of people down through. They don't submit to anybody. Right? They don't submit to anybody, anything. Well, what's the pastors for? There, if we want to, we'll go and listen to you. God help you when you die. God help you. Well, you're, you're called to be a pastor. You're right. You're right. But what are you called to be? You know, who do they say that I am? Well, they said, you're, you're Elijah. John the Baptist come from the dead. Oh, is that what they say? But the question is, who do you say that I am? Who do you say? That's really the question. Who am I to you? That's really the question. 
What's that look like? Who am I to you? I would, Jesus could say that, but I say this tonight. Who am I to you? Who am I to you? And then if you answer that right, Jesus says, now you got that right. Now it's time for you to have some seed. And you'll turn around and you'll be what you're called to be. But if you can't get the little thing right, how are you ever going to blossom? You won't. You'll be cut off. You won't because you can't produce. Because your, your, your DNA will be wrong. You'll be demons in. And how can you, pastor, if you had never got it right, because your flock would be no better in you and you produce that tainted fruit, right? It won't be pure. It won't be right, right? The fear of the Lord. When I talk about fear, I was worried about what I was going to say tonight. I fear God. Probably don't fear him enough. But I'm fearing him more all the time the closer I get to him. Amen? You know, last night was great. But without the fear of the Lord, none of us will fulfill what we're called to do. Because the fear of the Lord drives you to do it right. Mm, drives you into excellence. Do, can we really say that we, we know God if Jesus walked in here? How many of us would say, no, my Lord, I don't think it's a good thing that you come in. I'm really not ready for you. How can you stop him? He's going to walk through those doors. You are what you are, right? I'll get it. You, you can't get it right. You got to have it right. Amen. Amen? So that's where we're at here. A fear of the Lord leads to life. So one may sleep satisfied, untouched by evil. They don't come up and get you while you're asleep. What the enemy do? Why they slept, he went and sowed bad seed. <sighs> Wherever your conscience is at, and that's just why we gotta, we gotta, you know, you know how people that live a riotous life, they can do stuff and they don't even feel bad about it. And it says it's like a hot iron, touching, and it heals, touch it again, heals. After a while, you can touch it longer. After a while, red hot, man. Oh, I can't believe that. So you build up your callous stuff. Untouched by God. Why we sleep. Why we're not protected. God's there. God's there. The evil one can't get in. You ever have a dream and you, you just get up and you go, what kind of evilness be, must be in my heart that in my dream I would go along with that? What kind of evilness must be there? Well, you can't control your dreams. The devil gives them to you. I want to tell you something. Where your conscience is at, you will not do that in your dreams. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I will say this, if you're not a pedophile, you will not be a pedophile in your dreams. You will not touch your daughter in your dreams. No way. Speaking truth, ain't I? Amen. Mm-hmm. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. You know, and I will, I, I will stop with that. But when you fear God and you're walking with the Lord and you know, I'm not perfect, but I'm all in. You know, I'm all in. You have confidence. There's something that happens on the inside of you that you know God hears you and God loves you. You don't need to be a, you don't have to have a preacher try to convince you, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. It's almost like you're hypnotized. God loves me, God loves me. No, when, you're, when you, you fear the Lord and you're, 
and you're you're you just you loving God the best you can, and you're there is a confidence on the inside of you. My God, I'm with my God, and that, and you don't need anybody to really tell you that. Oh, it's good to to hear it, to read it, but you know it. There's something that happens on the inside of you. That's where your faith rises up. And you pray, and you tell the devil to leave because you know whose you are, because it's on the inside of you. See, you're not married unless you're married on the inside. Is that not true? You're not married unless you're married on the inside. The papers are the papers. The preacher, the words are the words. But unless it goes deep on the inside, and it's different than being brainwashed. I need to love my wife. 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 But you don't love her. Need to be nice to my wife. I'm nice to her, but you don't love her. Or it's the other way, you know. You hearing me? Same way with the Lord. He's the Lord. He's Lord. He is my Lord. He is my Lord. But really, is he your Lord? Really. But when that happens, there's a confidence on the inside. There's a confidence that whatever I ask the Lord, he'll give it to me. So what are you going to ask God? Now I'm going to end it with this. What are you going to ask him? hundred bucks? thousand dollars? How about a million bucks? Well, that'd make me happy. No, if you're there, you lose. It's your call. It's your call. I have to find. I have to do. I have to be excellent. Amen? I have to be excellent. Amen. But you say, but I, God says, I know we're working that thing out, but you're going for your call. Start operating in your call. Start operating in your call. You know how your, your dad, usually dads teach their kids when they're little? They're not dads yet, but they're, they're, they're acting like they are. They're doing this and they're doing that because dad says you got to do that. They act like they're, they're doing the work of their father for him. And all at once, they become what they're called. Amen? That's how you are. You're not maybe excellent in it, but you're going there and you're going to achieve it. Did not Paul say, I know that the good work that God has started in you, he will complete it. And that's somebody that's all in. That you'd be the most excellent music players there are. At least here for this thing, you'd be excellent. And that's what you strive for. Amen? That's what we strive for, to be the excellent. If you're going to take over the classroom with the kids or the nursery or whatever you're going to do, you're excellent. You refuse to just sit and do nothing. Say, what can I do? What can I do? Well, I don't know. What can you do? See, there is something about, about working for the Lord. You don't retire. You just die. <laughs> Amen. What if we retired Gail out when she got to be 65 or 70? How if we say, you hit 70, that's God's number. Gail, don't do anything. <laughs> it don't work like that. Uh, it don't work like that. So uh, this is what I'm, I'm praying. I'm praying that you, 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 uh, you all got heads up, says the Lord last night, where you're headed. I wish I would have had that. I didn't have any of that. I had more church in the cab of my truck than I did at church. When you can have more church in your car or mowing the lawn than what you can get here, that's when we need to shut down. Amen? Now, you can get the Holy Ghost on you, but you better have more church going on at church. Amen? More presence of God. So, I'm going to pray for you. Father, I just pray. Let's stand. Father, I pray for each one of us here tonight that our call, what we're called to do, what steps that looks like, and then go on to a higher call, says the Lord. 
It moves. God graduates you. But you got to fulfill on the top run, says the Lord. You got to fulfill it. And your reward will be great. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.